Welcome to this Skill Builders tutorial where we will be discussing converting an Application Express form from automatic to manual processing. And you might be asking, why would you want to use manual processing when Apex provides this awesome automatic feature? Well, automatic processing wants to bind directly to a table. So what that means is that there's no way to leverage any sort of table APIs that you might have, or uh, if you do not want to operate directly on your database table, uh, say you want to slowly build up a transaction and then process it all at once on a later screen, uh, you cannot do that uh, with automatic row processing. You must work directly with the table. A manual PL SQL process will provide the flexibility we need to satisfy some of those requirements. But do keep in mind that when you do this, it is going to be a fair amount of work. So if you have a very simple administrative form, which is just holding a few values, automatic row processing is really great because it's very easy to create that form and it's very easy to maintain. And typically, there's not gonna be a lot of business rules around how the data gets into that table. So before I continue uh, and modify the form, I need to just talk a little bit about how automatic row processing works in Apex. And there are two main phases. There's a render and submit. And we're gonna be talking about the render phase first. How this works is there is an automated row fetch on your page, which is going to ultimately run some sort of select statement against your database. Well, if you look at the automatic row processing source on the screen, you can see that I have my automatic row fetch configured so that it will select from the emp table and it will map my p3 emp no item to the emp no column and that is the primary key column. So I know that an employee number will identify one record or one employee. But also notice that there is nowhere to specify which column maps to which item. So Apex uses the item source to map the items to the fetched database column values. And we'll talk about that in greater detail in a little bit later. Well. What happens on the processing side or when you submit, right? So when you click the insert, create, or delete button, what exactly happens? Well, Apex leverages the automatic row processing to perform any of those three actions. And again, the item source, it's going to map the item values to database columns. So just to kind of point out, it's the opposite direction. So in the fetch, it was mapping the database column values into the items, but in the processing, it's quite the opposite. It's, actually, it's mapping the item values back to the database columns. And this should make sense because uh, if you think about the workflow, the user was looking at a form, they maybe changed some information, and then they clicked a button to take an action, and the expectation is that that action is going to modify something in the database. You also might be wondering, well, if we have one process, how does it managing the insert, update, and delete? Well, this is based on the request that comes in, so whichever button you click. So if you click the Create button, it will submit a Create request, which will ultimately trigger an insert. If you click the Save button or Apply Changes button, it will submit as a save request and perform an update. And something quite similar happens for Delete. So if you want to get rid of all that free code, um, it's all or nothing. So once you go to manual processing, you are not going to be using any of the automated row fetch or automatic row processing. This includes the built-in optimistic locking. So by default, Apex will only allow you, allow you to update or modify records uh, so long as they haven't changed in the database since, you've, since you queried them. Uh, for more information about optimistic locking, I encourage you to go ahead and, and, and look that up to get a better understanding. Uh, and it's something that you should include in your web applications. So what do we have to do as part of our conversion? Well, 
we need to modify a couple different things. We need to modify items and processes. So the first thing is we want to modify our items so that they are no longer tied to the database columns. And we're also going to add an MD5 item. This item is going to facilitate our optimistic locking. Well, we also have to remove our automatic row processing and our automated row fetch processes. And we're going to replace those uh, with our own insert, update, and delete process, as well as uh, an init page process, which is going to select the values from the database. So I had mentioned this item configuration, item source a couple times. Uh, so let's just take a second uh, to see what this looks like. Well, if you were to edit an item, in this case, we're editing P3 ename, and you look at the source section, you can see that the source used is set to always replacing, the source type is set to database column, and the source value is set to a specific column name. In this case, the ename column. And what ends up happening is behind the scenes, uh, if you have a row fetch on a page that is configured like this, when this item is rendered, or when this item is generated, it is going to take the ename column for whatever the fetched row is and place it as the value for this item. Now this is quite nice because it's very easy to set up and it's very easy to configure, but we need to get rid of all of that configuration in order for our manual processing to work. And lastly, this is how we're gonna modify our processes. You can see up at the top, this is what we currently have in our, automated, our automatic form. We have a fetch row and we have a process row, and they're going to be configured something like this, where we declaratively say which table and we specify how to uniquely identify a row. We're done. We're going to end up with the exact same functionality, but we're going to have an init page process and an update, delete, and insert process. Our code, uh, these processes are going to have code similar to this defined. So it's actually going to contain PL SQL code. It's no longer going to look like this declarative process. So now it's time for a demo. So here's my page. And you can see that I have a fetch row from EMP process, a process row of EMP process. And I need to get rid of these. So First things first, let me just go in and I'm going to delete these processes because they are no longer necessary. Delete. Okay. And now I'm going to go in and delete the row processing. Now that those processes are gone, I need to configure my items so that they are no longer bound to the non-existent processes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit my employee number item. This is the very first item in the list. And if I click on source, here I can see that the source of this item is set to always replacing, which I need to change. I'm gonna change it to only when current value is null. I'm going to change the source type to static assignment, and I'm going to get rid of the source value expression. And I'm going to do this for all my other items. A very quick way to do this, instead of clicking apply changes, I'm going to click the right arrow, and notice it's on, it's on the ename item now, uh, and it's already focusing on the source. So I'm going to continue along and make these modifications. All right, so uh, I finish uh, modifying all my items so that they are no longer bound to database columns. And now I need to add one more. So I'm gonna add one more item, create page item, and I'm gonna create a hidden item, and I'm gonna call it P3MD5. Oops, five. And the reason I'm creating this item is this is going to facilitate uh, the optimistic row locking feature, which you get for free from Apex. Notice here, I don't have to modify the source used and source type because this is the appropriate uh, default settings. Okay, so now I have a blank form and I need to provide 
a way to fetch data into my form. So to do this, I'm going to go to the after header section and I'm going to create an init page process. And this is going to be a process type of PL SQL. Here, I'm going to call it init page. Next. And here, I need to provide some PL SQL. I'm going to copy over here. And here you can see, uh, I basically have a select statement. I'm computing an MD5 for my record. And I'm binding all my items to the fetched record. I'm not going to provide any success or error messages. And here, I'm going to add a condition. And I'm going to say, only run this select statement if p3 empno is not null. I'm only going to select a record if uh, empno has a value. Create process. So at this point, um, I don't have a whole lot, but I have a little bit. So what I'm going to do is if I click Cancel, and I click on a record for Blake, notice that it's fetching the Blake record. And this is no longer using the automated row fetch or automated row processing. However, if I click apply changes or delete, um, it's just not going to work. So watch, let me, I'm on the Blake record. Let me click delete. Notice that the Blake record still stays. So let's go in and create an insert and update and delete. So edit my page. And here, quite simply, I'm just going to go to Page Processing, Create, PL SQL, and I'm going to call it Insert Emp. And I have some defined uh, PL SQL here. So basically, it's just going to invoke an insert statement. Uh, I'll go ahead and provide a success message and I'll say uh, employee inserted. Next. And here I need to specify a button. So I only want this to happen when the user clicks create. Now I'm going to replicate this uh, similar process for update and delete and bind them to the appropriate buttons. So create PL SQL update emp. Going to copy in some SQL here or PL SQL. Uh, notice that this SQL, uh, I'm not going to talk in great detail about the uh, different parts of the PL SQL, but just notice that there are a couple different calls to these raw to hex um, MD5 um, procedures. And this is basically using optimistic locking. And it's also detecting whether or not the items have changed. So first, we're going to see uh, if anything has changed on the form. And then we're just going to verify that uh, before we actually perform the update, uh, did anything change in the database? And if nothing changed, then we're going to allow you to do your update. Otherwise, we're going to raise an error. We're going to say that uh, the database has changed since the last time I loaded the data. Next. We're going to say employee updated. All right, let's just say saved. And here we're going to bind this uh, to the save button. And lastly, we need to add a delete.
Tilly Imp. Next. And we're gonna bind this to the delete button. Now, the very last thing that you need to do is that you need to make sure that this reset page process uh, fires last. Because right? otherwise, this uh, sometimes this reset page uh, can actually um, clear out all the updated values you're looking for. So let me go ahead and click Run. And here I have Blake. And I'm going to change uh, his salary to 3000 Apply changes, and now I can see Blake's salary has been updated to 3000 And here I'll just change his department number uh, from sales to accounting. Apply changes. And now Blake uh, is in department 10, which uh, if I edit this record, is accounting. So only use this manual processing whenever you do not want to operate directly on a database table, or if you have uh, advanced business logic where you need to invoke some PLSQL routines uh, to satisfy your requirements. The automatic uh, PLSQL forms are quite nice in that they provide a lot of uh, automatic row locking and uh, just really great uh, solid code. Um, so do not modify them unless you have to. But if you do, you're going to have to uh, configure your items so that uh, you disable them from being bound to the database columns, as well as you're going to have to remove the built-in automated row fetch and row processing and create your own fetch and insert, update, and delete statements.